Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Build Your Copywriting Business Podcast. Hey there, Kate. Hello, hello. Hello. Okay, guys, today we are going to get down and dirty. Well, not dirty, but you know what I mean. We are going to talk- Confessional. Confessional. We are going to talk about lazy copywriting tactics, the things that people do that are a mark- of being a lazy copywriter, maybe not perpetually lazy, but in mm-hmm. that moment, it's a lazy thing to do. And total transparency, we're going to tell you when we've done that stuff ourselves in the past. So mm-hmm. we're not perfect. I think you <laughs> you haven't figured that out by now. It's, it's we're not, excuse go. me. Yeah. Yeah, well, speak for yourself, Kate. Nikki. That's a great point. That's a great point. <laughs> uh, well, I'm only going to talk about the, the mistakes that I have made. No, no. Um, I've made but, some of you said past too. This is like recent past for me, some of these. So, but yeah, I know. Not recent. You write mm. for us, you know. I know, I know, mm. I know. Yeah. Mm. Stay tuned to watch me <laughs> fire Kate Sitars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, get into some of the real content so you guys can actually learn something today. Yeah. So, like, like we said, we're going to get into lazy copywriting tactics. And uh, the first one, actually, it's it's right before any holiday or mm. seat. Like, I just know it's coming. I know it's coming. As soon as, as September hits, I know that the um, you'll fall for our savings is going to be in every subject line. You'll fall for these autumn sweaters. You'll fall like, oh, it makes me. And then, um, uh, Thanksgiving, you'll be so thankful for these deals. Like, ah, I can't take bring, it. Yeah. Christmas, bring joy to your life with these sweaters. Uh, my favorite one, though, that I ever saw was, and I it comes up because I think I posted on Facebook years and years ago, and so it'll come back in time. And it was fall for falling prices, oh. which just was the, it took it to another level. So forget the overused pun. This was doubling down on the fall pun, it which was just. So sad. And it was oh. a, I, I don't, I won't put the brand on blast, but it was a, a very large, reputable, you know, credit card company that, oh, yeah. Uh, so. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, millions absolutely. of people saw that line. Yeah. So the the takeaway of this is don't use don't use the obvious copy. If you see everybody else writing it, do your best not to write it. I get that sometimes a client will come to you and they'll be like, "Hey, I just came up with this really clever line." So it's September, right? Let's send it, let's send out an email that says, "You'll fall for our savings." And yeah, if they're really proud of it, you may have to be like, super. We could try something else or no, you really love this. Okay. That's going to be the subject Mm -hmm. line. Or hey, let's test the subject line. That's always my favorite if clients are pushing back on things to say, oh, sure, let's test this, but let's also test this version and see. And you know, you can even say if your client says, well, well, what about this follow-up? You can say, that is such a fun line. The tricky thing is, is this time of year that tends to get used a lot and we want to stand out in their inbox. But and really, that's the point. It's it's lazy because you're saying the same thing that everybody else is. And whether it's in an inbox, in the subject line, I feel like that's where we see them so often, um, mm-hmm. or a headline or, or wherever. If you're falling back to the same pun that everybody else falling is Falling back. I see what falling. you did there. Oh, no. <laughs> I did it to myself. <laughs> um, if you are, if you are reverting. To, mm-hmm. If you are you are using as a crutch the the same puns that everybody else is using, or the same lines, or the then you're not standing out, and you are you're you're not you're doing disservice to your client. Yeah, and I think often this happens when honestly get up from your computer and take a break. I feel like when I'm coming up with cruddy lines that are just like oh, none of this is really. St- it, it means I need to just walk away for a bit and, and maybe even sleep on it and come back fresh the next day. And that's why we build in lots of time for even smaller projects, because you want the time to really do come up with something that's not been done before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Your client, the project deserves as as original of copy as you possibly can and a standout copy, as, as standout of copy as it can possibly be. Wow. This is why I write and don't mm-hmm. speak extemporaneously. But the the next one, actually, you kind of alluded to it in your, your fall mm-hmm. for falling mm-hmm. savings is the when people use two words very close to each other, the same word, very close to each other in mm-hmm. the sa- either the same line or the same 
two lines. So something like, um, something like save big on top travel deals. And then the subhead is like deals like these won't last long in mm. the headline and the subhead. Those are such important pieces of information. And when you use the exact same word, you're not giving them any more information. You're all you're saying is this is a deal. Yeah. And I think often this happens when you don't read back through your work, which is another lazy copywriter move. We've all done it where you're just so happy you burst this copy and it took so much out of you and you just want to get it off to the client and you say, send it through. And I, I can't tell you what a bad move this is, not only just yeah. for catching these overused words and, oh my gosh, I said the same thing here and same thing here. There have been times where I've missed whole paragraphs that Ooh. just, I like stopped a sentence midway and knew I was going to come back to it. And then guess what? Didn't come back to it or left notes for myself to come back to it and sent those then notes through and then have to play it off. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I sent you a different version when it's like a Google doc that I sent through or something. No, there was no other version, which yes, sometimes I have multiple versions because definitely I hate editing in a Google Doc that a client already has because I don't yeah. want them watching me. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh not 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 a great move. Yeah. Not the a good just, look. Just ends right in the yes. middle. Just just ends. Doesn't yes. even yeah, this is not even punctuate. It just ends. Yes. And That's thankfully it. this has been with clients I've worked with for a very long time. And they're always very, very kind of like, oh hey, I think I think there might be something missing. No, there's definitely something missing, but they're very kind enough to be that gentle in their delivery I of it. I think there might be something missing. This sentence literally makes no sense. I'm wondering if maybe we could have a sentence that would make sense. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, I could get that for you. Oh. Yeah. Oof. So read back through your work and then you'll find these sure. duplicate words and these yeah. these these ideas that you're saying, oh, oh, I don't actually need to say this five different ways. I think mm -hmm. I can say it. This this one mm -hmm. way is the most solid or maybe I need to combine these two different ways I've said things and this word's stronger than this word. And that's where the editing process for yourself comes in to just mm -hmm. make it a much, much stronger piece of copy. And it's it's so lazy and obvious when you haven't gone back through and read through your work and done that editing bit. Yeah. And, and pro tip, if you really want to be sure, as I think you should really want to be sure that you are sending the best copy through to your client. Yes. Read it through, look for this stuff, but also read it out loud to yourself mm -hmm. because you will catch things when you hear it again, coming back to you out loud. I realize you're saying it as you're hearing it, but that's how humans work. Um, you will hear things when you are speaking it out loud that you don't hear or notice when you are just reading it on a page. So I was going to say, especially if you want to do a good job, you want to do a good job. So take yeah. the time to add in the step of reading it out loud to yourself, because this is often where you'll catch the duplicate words, where you'll catch, ooh, this sentence is a little bit awkward, or this sentence is super long. I haven't been able to take a breath. And yeah, I realize that people aren't going to be reading your copy out loud themselves, but we want to keep our sentences short and easy to understand. And reading it out loud is when you can kind of catch a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And I think a lot of these habits are habits we sometimes start of like, oh yeah, I'm going to read everything out loud. And you, and then as you go on, you're like, oh, I'm a much stronger copywriter. I'm faster. I'm a, you know, you, you get more experience as a copywriter. These are all habits I want to under emphasize we need to keep and rebuild these habits as we go. There's no point where you become a copywriter that should just skip over any of these things. That's when it, you start to do subpar work. That's when you are rushing. And these are all marks of things you want to come back to, even as you become you know, a copywriter with 10, 20 years of experience, you still want to do all of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's, that's a great transition because one of the things that we see a lot, it's funny because you're exactly that point, Kate, is as you start to get better at it, you think, well, I don't need to do this fundamental stuff mm -hmm. anymore. And that is not the case. Cause mm -hmm. when you start, when you start cutting corners at the beginning is when you start producing mediocre stuff at, at the end, or you mm -hmm. start getting a client going, this isn't really what we asked for. Um, and so cutting corners includes not looking at a brief or not filling out a brief uh, as you're talking to your client, not making sure that you've got all the information to get into, to, to write the project, um, not doing an outline. We see a lot of new copywriters miss that step. They go mm -hmm. from brief 
straight to writing in the doc and then it's convoluted and they get into the go, I don't understand how, how it's, it doesn't make any sense in this order. It's because you never took a step to put it in order before you started writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or skipping the concepting phase altogether of there's no angle unifying this whole piece. There's kind of like five different ideas shoved into one piece and that becomes very evident that there's no focal point for what you're doing. And so then everything kind of gets lost. The message gets muddled and there's no clear takeaway. There's no, ah, yes, this is what I want to walk away with when I read whatever this piece is, be it email, landing page, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that you have the concepting phase. And that's, I, that's another one I skipped recently confession only a few weeks ago where and I just jumped right into writing and it was, and that was, that can be fine for the brainstorm phase if you just want to do a brain dump, but mm -hmm. then going back and that's what I missed. I should have, okay, I have all these ideas. I have all these thoughts. They're not coherent. Let me get it out onto the page and then go back and do a proper concepting phase to say, okay, what, and looking at my brief, who is my audience? What, what is the goal of this project? Okay. What are some ideas and angles that are a way into this. Okay. With my brain dump, what of this still ties to this concept and ties to the goals of the brief? And I didn't do that. And I'm back to the drawing board because it, it was, it was, I came out and it was like, oh, this feels, yeah, it feels unput together because it wasn't put together properly. It had no solid foundation. So give yourself yeah. a solid foundation. Yeah. And I think that that can happen a lot too, when you've been working with a client for a while, and yes. I've definitely done this and thought like, oh, well, I know, psh, I know this client, I can just launch right into this. I know exactly what they're looking for. I know exactly. And, and you end up with mediocre copy and either you catch that it's mediocre. Hopefully you catch that it's mediocre and you go oh, screech. I have to go start this one again, or you're in the middle of writing it. And you're like, I don't even know where this is going. And then you have to go back and start or worst case scenario. You're like, yeah, I think that's fine. You send it through the client and they go, this is not really what we're looking for. Yeah. So it, you, there are not, you may get faster mm -hmm. at some of these steps. And that's not, that's not a requirement by any means because they're such important steps. You may not get faster, but you may, you may get faster. And then especially with certain clients, you may get faster at filling out the brief. You may get faster, but you can never skip the strategy stuff, because that's copywriting, right? Half of it is creativity and half of it is strategy. And if you take away the strategy by skipping out on the creative beef, by <laughs> skipping a creative beef, that too, <laughs> skipping out on the creative brief, skipping out on the outline, skipping out on, on planning it all out before you start writing it, then all you're going to be left with is creativity with nothing to, nothing to, to support it. The vegetarian copywriters are very happy to leave out the creative beef. Where's the beef? Yeah. I think that's a commercial. It's even too old for you. I vaguely rings bells, but. Yeah. Wendy's. Yeah. 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 I have my favorite Wendy's was the ranch tooth. That was, that's. Oh, that I don't recall. If I can find a link to it, I'll link to it in our show notes. Please do. <laughs> I think, Please I think. Do. It's, you know, low quality TV, but I think it's on YouTube somewhere. Anyway, um, it's nonsensical. It's not, don't take it as a mark of great copywriting. I just found it very humorous. That's <laughs> Love it. Anyway, right. um, another, uh, and we, you kind of mentioned this too, it, it, in passing with our, what we were just talking about of, um, you know, sending it on to through the client. We haven't read it through. Sending stuff through to the client without actually presenting the work, especially when it is a bigger project. It's the first time you're working with the client. It's it's worthy of more of a walking them through. With projects where you have a ton of notes in the margins, where you're like, "Oh, I want to make sure the client knows this and this and this and this." It's much easier to just hop on a thirty minute call with them so that you can guide their first look at this copy and talk through all of those things that you want to make sure that they see. Because I can't tell you how many clients I've sent notes through to and they ignore all the notes. They ignore the email. They don't read the email. I bullet point it out. I number it out. One, two, three. It gets ignored. It gets lost. And then they come back to me with a bunch of questions. And I'm like, well, if you had read my email, it would have been answered. Well, if I had done the due diligence of setting up a time to walk them through, then I might have mitigated a lot of these questions. 
And I get it. Like with a new client, you're like, oh, I worked so hard on this. I really want them to like it. I'm just going to close my eyes and hit send and then see what happens and cross my fingers until they email back. Like I do. I get that. But when you are just sending them a piece of copy blind, they're missing out on so much. And we have uh, an episode about this. We'll link to it in the show notes. Um, At least I think we have an episode about this. Um, Right about walking them through the initial creative review. I think so. uh, Yeah. Yeah. We've done so many Uh, episodes now. I mean, so. Um, but you know, what you do too, is you, you give them context for the project Mm -hmm. and it often, it's a while since you kicked it off. So you can review what the purpose of the project was, what you were trying to convey with the project, what all of this important stuff, because, you know, we assume while it's their project, they're going to remember all that. Not necessarily, especially if decisions were made in that kickoff call, right? If, well, uh, if you say, well, you know, it seems to me like we should focus on on this messaging and they'll say, actually, you know what? You're right. We should definitely focus on that messaging. They may have forgotten that. So when you send through your document, they're going, well, what is this? Whereas when you walk them through it, it's, it's all, it all becomes fresh in their mind again, and you don't have to go back and explain anything. Um, Walking your client through the brief is key, which by the way, too, you need to walk yourself through the brief before you send it through to the client. It's not enough to look at at the brief at the beginning and be like, yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I get that. Mm -hmm. And then outline and then write and then send it through to your client. You need to, before you send it through your client, take a look at your, your copy doc and compare it with the brief. Make sure that it covers off on all of the requirements in the brief. I've certainly done that plenty of times where I've been like, yep, okay, I'm done. Woo, good to go. And the client will be like, well, I mean, yes, certainly earlier in my career, I learned some some hard lessons. But when my client or boss would say, well, yeah, but this is great, but we are missing this point. And again, they're still very nice about it. But yeah, I missed a key point. That's my job. That should have been in that document. Mm hmm. Another lazy thing I did recently, um, and this is a lazy thing I do. I don't know. At this point, it's probably once every like three years or so. I have to like relearn the lesson. So this lesson is uh, writing copy directly in any sort of content management system and email platform, uh, you know, a WordPress website, anything where you're putting copy directly into the technology that's going to put it out in the world, wherever that is, and not actually having a Google Doc, a Word Doc, some sort of document somewhere with that copy, should anything go wrong with the technology that you're just throwing the copy in. Um, And why do I have to learn this lesson every few years? Because technology always inevitably does something and does fail you. Mm -hmm. Uh, It doesn't save it. It, you know, the internet goes out and you lost half of what you wrote in the system. You, in the case of our trip, our email software, I put in copy and um, I didn't have back. We were rearranging a workflow. And so when that workflow went poof, there was no backup copy for all of that copy that was written. Uh, it, it's It's every time I do it, I know, too, you're being lazy you're being lazy. Mm -hmm. This is one I tell myself. And, and so, and until I learned this lesson the hard way, and then I go back to the, the good habits again, but just do yourself a favor and don't, don't, don't learn the lesson. Just, just have your copy in, (laughs) in the cloud. Um, And that's, I guess, another thing too, is to make sure you're, you know, if you are doing, you know, uh, a Word doc on a hard drive, making sure it's auto-saving to the cloud so that you also don't lose it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It is so, the number of times that I've been working with a freelancer or with myself and I've gone, I've done the work and then my computer starts to do that like weird screen thing or like the screen goes dark. And now I have, it's it's all, everything on is automatically backed up. But that moment of like, I just did all this work and it's disappearing is the worst feeling. And quite frankly, too, that's not an excuse that you can use with a client. If you if you have a deadline coming up and the client is expecting a copy, you can't come back to the client and say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I had it all written. And then um, my computer died because you're a grown up. You're a professional. You can't use the the internet ate my homework. So you have to plan in advance to make sure that even if your computer goes down, even if any, any number of things, you have to have 
backups. Um, and there's another little pro tip. I know that, um, you know, computer is an investment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. So first of all, plan ahead to be able to upgrade your investment every four ish, four or five years, because they start to degrade and then they start to don't listen little computer. You're still, you're still great, but they start to, they start to, to get slower and they start to not operate the way that they need to be operating. But another thought is if you have a main computer, it's also a good idea to have an emergency backup computer for years. I have this very ugly, like bright, bright, uh, bright blue computer that would do nothing except it would like you, I could open word docs on it. I could connect to the internet and that's all I needed in a, in in an emergency situation. I needed to be able to edit my word docs or edit a Google doc and send things through to clients, connect to the internet. So I knew I always had that as a backup. Now I have a much better backup computer, but first of all, make sure that your computer is in good working order. Is it, it is an investment in your career and yes, back up. But also once you have your computer, consider having a, a backup computer, even if it's a cheapo one for now, but I would strongly urge you to consider having a backup computer. For sure. Do you want to talk about updating your computer <laughs> or is that too? It's a little too fresh. sensitive. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Uh, you do have <laughs> to, you do have to update your computer when your computer asks you to update. You, you do have to do Let's it. Do you it. do have to make it a priority. Um, we say this is a little fresh because, uh, I really need to update my computer right now She's because my updates computer, behind I'm, I'm several updates behind and the reason that I don't is because I have so many tabs open I have so many word docs open I have so many google docs open it's such a pain to close everything down remember what was open I all that stuff however my computer gets very passive aggressive when it's too late for when it when I, I'm when I'm late for an update and it will just stop doing basic functional things it will for example I was trying to save a word document and it just wouldn't do it. It was like, mm, no, no, I'm not going to do that. You haven't shut me down for months. So no, if you want that word doc saved, you're going to have to find another way to do it. And then you're going to have to shut me down and restart me and run my update. And it has done this with word docs. It will do it with printing things. I have to print this. And it's like, no, I will not print this for you. I just won't do it. You haven't updated me. I don't have to do this. So so my pro tip to you, and actually I'm going to start doing this right now after, well, not right now, after we finish recording this, I'm going to put it on my calendar Ooh. to run an update, maybe like the first Saturday of every month. So it's not during like a work it. day. Cause even mm -hmm. on a Mac, the updates still take like 20 minutes. I do yeah. remember PCs are worse though. So if you're running on a PC, schedule at that Buckle time because it takes forever, but you do not want to be in a scenario where you have to get on a call with a client or you have to do something. It has to be done in that moment. And perhaps your computer like mine is a little passive aggressive. I'm saying this with love, little computer, but you know, it's true and <laughs> will stop letting you do what you need to do because it needs to update, run your updates, schedule your updates as I am going to now do writing it down. She's moment. writing it down. Yeah. If you're yes. not watching, she's, yes. she's actually yes. writing it down. I love it. Yes. Can put um, it in a sauna. I feel like it's my turn now for another confession. That was big of you. I'm very <laughs> proud. <of you. laughs> I'm not perfect. <sighs> uh, before we started recording, uh, we knew we were going to talk about this topic. And I just happened to be talking about a freelance client who I hadn't had work with for months. And, and I wasn't repitching them. My intention wasn't to, to repitch them. And I was just like, oh, this is kind of great. Like, this relationship just just ended naturally. Uh, no, turns out a they mutual came back. Mutual ghosting. Yeah, yeah, mutual ghosting, uh, which is not at all. It, it's so lazy. It's it's not at all how I want to be treated. It's not how I want to treat my clients. It, and of course, they came back. It was not because we never, obviously, the relationship didn't end. Um, and so if you are considering letting go of a client, um, we were talking and I think you you said this, you're like, yeah, you're doing the copywriting because it's easier than breaking up with the client. And I was like, that's exactly it. Like the hanging over the looming of my head of doing copywriting work that I don't want to do is easier still than saying, 
hey, we're, we're parting ways. Um, here's another copyright or a few copyright recommendations that you could use, which is, it sounds ridiculous when I actually say that, you know, <laughs> tons of work versus just a very simple email. Yes, absolutely ridiculous. But I absolutely do understand. <laughs> absolutely do. Yes. It's so you, you have to do the you stuff do that it. you don't want to do sometimes. Yep. And if there are moments when you're thinking to yourself, oh, Ugh, maybe this is not the best way to do it. Take a second. You're going to save yourself time in the long run if you don't do the lazy stuff yes. up front, right? Yes. Yes. So true. Yeah. I, that now I'm just imagining point. old boyfriends who don't realize you guys have broken up. Like, hey, <laughs> Want to get together? And you're going to have to be like, no, I'm married now. <laughs> update. We'll uh, update in a yeah, future we'll episode. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, hopefully those breakups are a little more clear. I think, I think, uh, well, you know, we'll, I don't know. I feel like we'll get them on the podcast. Sure. We'll see. <laughs> we just send out an episode. Um, and I think another one, there's probably the last one. I feel like we've, we've covered a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot, another one is relying on spell check. We kind of talked mm -hmm. about the making sure to read it all through before you send it through the client. Also read it aloud before you send it through to the client. But I think sometimes too, we just go, well, I, spell check's going to light up when I'm doing something wrong. And it will generally, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's enough. Sometimes we have clients that spell things in different ways. We also, we know that as copywriters, we are able to break the rules of grammar so that yes. sometimes spell check will catch that and it will be wrong. And then you'll get used to not paying attention to spell check because it's getting all of this wrong. Um, and even the idea of, I know some people are like, well, I don't just use spell check. I use Grammarly. Yes. I have used Grammarly, but not Grammarly fan. gets a lot wrong, a lot yes. wrong yeah. and makes suggestions that are not good. And, you know, no offense to Grammarly. You guys are great. Good for you for starting a company, but you cannot rely on it without actually digging in and reading through your own work. You yeah. have to cannot send things through to clients with, uh, with typos or mistakes or oops, I spell check changed the name of the, um, of my client's first name to a mm -hmm. different spelling, like, Ooh, not good. Um, there was a, an ad that went out for one of our other brands and, uh, they had put in the captions and my name was spelled N I K K I. Um, my name is spelled N I C K I. And like, you know, when people send me messages here and there, I don't, if they spell it N I K K, it's not a huge deal. But when it's an ad that we put out and it was with an agency that we have worked with for years, I was not happy. And that did not reflect well back on them. Mm -hmm. So that's, you can't, spell check is not the end all be all by any means. And if you know that you're the kind of person who kind of overlooks, mistakes, typos, do you, they just go right past you when it's your own work, then you may want to consider having a professional proofreader on call that you can send stuff to and say, Hey, I just need a second set of eyes on these mm -hmm. that they can, they can verify it before you send it through to the client. Yeah. Will that cost you a little bit? Absolutely. But it will cost you a lot less than losing a client because you're sending through typos. Yeah. And It'll cost you less, but also just roll that cost of that proofreader. If they're charging 25 bucks an hour and it's going to take, you know, an hour and you'll, you'll, you know, obviously work with them to understand how quickly they can read through whatever it is you're sending them. Um, just roll that cost into your quote to your mm -hmm. client. Say, okay, yeah. I know for this project, I'm going to use a proofreader or you're going to use a proofreader on every project. And okay, this is an email. It might take them an hour. I'm going to charge my client an extra hour and send that through to, to the proofreader. And then the cost is covered. Um, could you put a little extra on it because you're giving this proofreader work and, you know, make a profit or whatever? Sure. But you don't absolutely need to do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a cost of, it's a cost of putting through the best work as possible. So it mm -hmm. completely makes sense to build it into the, the project. That's a great point, mm -hmm. Kate. One typo, okay, maybe, I, I'm truly saying this as a client, one typo, okay, maybe, I don't want to, frankly, I'm not psyched about seeing any typos in work that we get from writers, uh, but like, okay, one, if I see any more than one, and I'm not just talking in one document, if there's a typo in one document, and then there's another typo in another document, we're going to be starting to look for a new 
a new writer or a new Mm -hmm. proofreader or whatever that person doing. Cause it's our clients rely on us for the highest quality work. And that is what, that is what we should be delivering the highest quality work, which is, I guess, kind of the, the theme in general is any of these things that we, the ways that we're cutting corners and like, Oh, I don't need to do that. Or, Oh, I'm just not going to, it's lazy, right? It's fundamentally lazy. And our professional reputation is so, so important, not just for referrals, which it certainly is important for referrals, but the, the creative community, even though it's global, the creative community is, is smaller than you think it is. And you don't ever want to get any kind of reputation as someone who, who doesn't do their absolute best. You want to be known as the highest quality copywriter. You deserve it. You've done all of this work and your clients deserve it. Top quality. That's, that's what we want to be putting out there at all times, top quality. So again, if at any point you're going, oh, this might be a little bit lazy, alarm bells, alarm bells, take a step back, learn from us and uh, eliminate any of these lazy behaviors. You will end up so much happier in the long run. So so your clients. Oh yes. So will your clients. Absolutely. So with that, we will catch you all in the next episode. Bye everybody. Like what you heard? Hit subscribe so you never miss a video. And if you're ready to take the first step toward becoming a copywriter yourself, sign up for a free video training right here.